All right, it's going to end up being a good luck token. By the way, it looks on the top. It's going to probably be in the 1940s. It says, good luck, you're, you're, you're a lucky Hormel girl. What a beautiful day it is today. It is a Saturday on a crisp, cool morning in the fall. Trees are turning, leaves are falling. Oh, it feels good. Uh, got a location today, about an hour away. I'm fixing to go pick up Army Man. Y'all know who Army Man? I haven't hunted with Army Man in quite a while. And I'm gonna pick him up. We're gonna go to this location where they have found an old cannonball. And uh, so we're gonna go up there and hunt that location for a little while. Then we're gonna move on to a town about 30 miles away and hunt over my daughter's moving uh, this week. And uh, we're gonna go look at her house and see what we can find in her yard as well. But uh, hopefully we'll have a good day. And if we find anything, we're definitely gonna turn the camera on and we'll show it to you. Until then, I'll see you out in the field. Well, we made it out here to the land and uh, it's got, some big old trees. We got a big oak tree right over here, a big oak tree right over here, and probably a 200 year old pecan tree right here. This land is, is my distant family I'm on my grandmother's side. It's the Morrow land, and it was a grand land, a land grant back in the 1840s. They've already found one cannonball out here on this tree, and uh, they just showed it to me. It's a real cannonball, two pound ball. And uh, so we're out here today. I got Sean with me, Cheryl, and her husband. And we're out here searching this little land. And uh, so let me get to swinging. If I find anything, we're gonna turn the camera on. We'll show it to you. It dates back, so maybe we'll find some good treasures. Let's keep going. All right, got a 1516 on my Equinox I'm hunting with today. And this is the first uh, uh, decent find of an old relic. It's an old pocket watch, I'll be pocket knife. Pretty much toasted up, but hey, that's the first good find. At least it's a sign of good human activity. So let's keep on going for some old relics and maybe some old coins. All right, let's keep looking. Well, let's get the 25 right here and got my first weedy. All right, if there's a weedy out here, there's gotta be some silver out here. I don't know the date on it yet. It's, uh, I have to look at it in a second and tell you. All right, uh, army man's hollering at me. He said he's got something over here, kind of a relic. Let's go over here and see what he's got. Well, where are we at? Oh, okay. Oh, looks like we got a silver plated spoon. Yep, that's what it's gonna be. I bet if you clean that back off right there, it says silver plate. Probably Rogers. Rogers. Yep, Rogers, silver plated spoon. All right, we're getting right on top of the homestead here. Let's keep at it. There's our buddies today, the cows. All right, let's keep going. All right, I was getting kind of a mid-tone here. It was a low tone, like a uh, 11. Had a piece of iron in the hole. It's an old buckle. It's an old belt buckle. All right, we'll keep on going. All right, got another good signal here, 2021. Very shallow, it's right underneath the surface. Let's see what this is going to be. I see it right there. That is going to be an accordion reed. It's got the note right there. I believe that's what that's going to be. Yeah, it's an accordion reed. All right, find those in old home sites all the time. Let's keep going. All right, got a solid 22, just like the other 22 a while ago. This is going to be a a wheat penny. Let's see if we can clean it up. And... Pretty smooth on the back side, so it's going to be an older one. 
Well, I'll clean them up later at the wrap-up and tell you the date of them. All right, there's got to be a silver out here somewhere. Let's keep going. All right, Army Man says he's got something over here. And... Oh, yeah. I bet that rang up good. I'm 17. Like an old locket. You're right. I want the other half is in there. Who knows? Yep. I always dig these hearts out there at these old homesteads. I don't know why. It must have been real popular back in the day. There you go, sir. Thanks, sir. I was just up here, just walked through it and just missed it. I gotta leave a few of them there from time to time, make you feel deported. So we'll keep on going. Well, I'm gonna live dig this one. This is ringing up a 25, 26, and it's very, very tight. So this is definitely gonna be a coin. I don't know if it's gonna be a, what type of coin it's gonna be, but we're gonna find out together. It's still in the hole. Alright, let's keep the camera on it where you can see it. Okay, there it is. Right there. I knew it was going to be a... What's that going to be? It's going to say... One cent. It's gonna be another old wheat penny. I'll get to the wrap up. I'll clean it up over here and get the date on it for you. Looks like it's gonna be one of the older ones, as smooth as it is on the back. All right, let's keep going. Well, we got a 15, about four or five inches down. I think I bent it with my shovel right there. Got another silver plated spoon, close to where we dug the other one earlier. All right, let's keep moving. It's getting a solid 29 or 30. This is what you would normally dig up in these old homesteads. You know what that is? Getting the light. It's a range guide for an old horse and buggy. All right, still looking for that silver coin. Let's get at it. Twenty-seven, six inches deep. Let's live dig this one. See what we got here. Ringing up really good. Could be another piece of copper. Could be another wheat penny. I don't know yet. All right, it's out of the hole. Let's see what we got. It's gonna be right there. Well, that's going to be going to be a frigid air handle. Oops, frigid air. Ah, it's aluminum. That's why it rang up good. All right, let's keep going. I can read, and I just found this little toy car. Check that out. Check that out. Still got the wheels on it. I'll clean that up, and uh, that'll be a nice little find right there. Let me clean it up, and we'll get another picture of it. Well, it looks like some 1930s style of car. And uh, still got all four wheels on it. I'll clean it up later and see if we can get uh, the name. It's probably a Tootsie Toy. But I like these old cars. I have a collection of them. Well, that's a nice find. I haven't found a lot today, but that's the, that's a good keeper there. All right, let's keep going. All right, I got a 2627 high tone here. About six inches deep. Let's see what we can come up with. We'll live dig this one. Maybe a mason jar lid. But we'll find out. We'll see. 
All right, so out of the hole. It's gonna be right there. And it's gonna be, uh, let me get out of the light, definitely gonna be some type of coin or token. Yeah. It's gonna be an old token. All right, let me switch cameras and clean this up. It's got somebody's face on it. And we'll see what this is. All right, it's gonna end up being a good luck token. By the way, it looks on the top. It's gonna to probably be in the 1940s. It says, good luck, you're, you're, you're a lucky Hormel girl. On the front and on the back, it says Hormel good food with some cows up there on the top. So, probably 1940s good luck token. In 1945, the war that racked the world was finally over. American women, who had served as military translators, typists, and even pilots, suddenly found themselves out of a job. At the same time, the spam man was trying to sell tinned pork. J.C. Hormel was the spam man, head of Hormel Foods. He was the canny heir to his father's canned meat business. Under him, the company introduced a smooth, spiced pork product known as Spam, right on the cusp of the Second World War. But there was a problem. By wartime's end, 90% of Hormel's inventory was shipped overseas as food for American troops and allies. The company now needed to market wartime tinned food to a peacetime audience. So, in 1946, the Hormel company started hiring for the Hormel Girls, a drum and bugle corps of female musicians who had served in the war. The requirements to be a Hormel girl reflected the times. Most of the performers were white, and all were unmarried. They also had to play instruments. On August 29th, the Hormel girls completed their first month of training. Their test was the 29th American Legion National Drum and Bugle Corps Championships held in New York. In neat uniforms, they played hits such as Yankee Doodle Dandy and Give My Regards to Broadway. They marched in parades, played in shows, and sold Hormel products, especially Spam, door-to-door. -door. Advertisements proclaimed that when talented XGI drum and bugle girls came to town, they distributed free Spam or chili in stores. Driving 35 matching white Chevrolets, the performers proceeded like a caravan, drawing attention wherever they went. In 1948, the Hormel girls went to Hollywood and took to the airwaves. While before they had played a mix of military and popular music, the music with the Hormel Girls show featured big band music, punctuated by regular reminders that Hormel's chili and ham was the best. It proved a good combination. By 1953, the show was number four in the yearly Nielsen rankings. The Hormel Girls were famous. Soon they stopped going door to door and only pitched Hormel products to stores. The girls earned bonuses for selling lots of meat with a premium for spam sales. But selling wasn't the main requirement. It was still all about performing. In the early 1950s, the show expanded to include dance. The Hormel girls wore elaborate costumes and performed for locals and grocers. As the group reached its peak, many newer Hormel girls were photogenic professional musicians instead of GIs. But in 1953, the show came to an end. The caravan was costing the Hormel company $1.3 million a year, and Jay Hormel was sick and would die in 1954. As television proved to be cheaper advertising, the last performance was held on December 13, 1953. Hormel girls went on to other jobs at the company or in music, but there was no denying their effectiveness. In the years that the Hormel girls performed, Hormel's sales doubled, and Spam successfully made its transition from food of necessity to classic Americana. Well, this is the wrap up for the day. We hunted uh, that old farmstead, really didn't find a whole lot. We came over here to my daughter's house here in another town about 30 miles away. And it's a, we knew there was not gonna be anything out here, but we wanted to check it out anyway. But here we go, this is Army Man's finds. He got him a lot of trash. We dug a lot of these uh, ball, and mason jars here's all my trash tons of them as well bunch of iron shotgun head stamps just everything you would think in an old farmstead got this cool little thing um i think it's off maybe off of gas really not sure what that is that's pretty neat he got him a couple of uh, pennies and dimes a couple of spoons got him one weedy two silver plated spoons 
and uh, I got a range guide, a Frigidaire handle, a couple of uh, bullets, no pocket knife, and I whacked that one good. Another spoon there. Um, old toy car here at this house, a couple of uh, organ reeds at the other location, a old buckle. I got three wheat pennies, don't even know the dates. I'm probably going to think 30s or 40s, but to me, the best find of the day is probably going to be this token. It's going to be your lucky Hormel girl. You got to be lucky to be called Hormel, don't you? But uh, it's probably a World War II token. It's got a pig and a cow and a sheep on the back, Hormel Good Foods. But I'm going to research that a little bit more and see. That's I would think that would be in 1940s. But I think that's my best find. Army man's best find is going to be this locket. He couldn't find the other half of it. But, but anyway, there's all the trash. Here's all the treasures for the day. I did get a few more coins. Let me pull those out. Um, somewhere in here I got some coins. Yeah, we dug at this house, so... Yeah, got a few coins there. No silver. No, I got one wheat penny out of the deal. I don't know which one it is. One of them's a wheat penny. But that make my wheat penny count up to number four. I think it's that one right there. That's a weedy right there. All right. There it is, folks. There's the trash. Here's all the treasures. Like we always say, you don't always have good days. You have days like this. And uh, the greatest treasure is not what's sitting on your tailgate. The greatest treasure is what's up in heaven. Keep searching, my friends. Keep looking up. Till we meet again, happy hunting, and God bless.